Hey there, this is Dr. Linda Burke. I am not going to talk about something medical today, but I am going to talk about a personal experience that I want everyone to know as a precautionary tale and also as lesson learned. So we've heard about Delta lobbying because they lost a half a billion dollars. You reap what you sow, Delta. I have zero sorrow or sympathy for you. On June 30th, I plan to take a trip of my dreams. I was going to Paris and the flight from my departing city to Atlanta was delayed four times because of weather conditions. I get that. But there should at least be some accommodation in terms of getting a passenger from point A to point B. Long story short, my departing flight, my departing city was Orlando. I went to the help desk at Orlando to see if they could get me to Atlanta. I just needed to get to Atlanta because once I'm in Atlanta, I then get my flight to Paris. Delta was not able to do that. They weren't able to get another, put me on another airlines from Orlando to Atlanta. And there was a there was a, a supervisor whose name was Jocelyn and she was explaining that to someone else that they had um, staffing issues. They didn't have enough flight attendants. So I thought she was talking about my particular flight to Atlanta. And I said, yeah, well, that's kind of sad that you don't have the staff to do that. And then she started talking about emergencies. And I said, hey, I understand what emergencies are because I'm a physician. Well, oh, my God. Why did I say that? She then got very defensive and she called me a bunch of names, including condescending. And I pulled out my camera to take a picture of her because I asked her for her name. She gave it to me. I asked her if I had the correct spelling. She told me to read her, read her, her name tag. And I said, I can't read your name tag because I have a visual impairment. And that's why, you know, I took the picture because I was going to blow up her name. Well, when I pulled out my camera and took a picture of her, pulled out my phone, she immediately got very defensive and demanded that I delete her picture. I said, okay, fine, I'll delete it. And I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to delete it. And she kept saying, delete it, delete it, delete it. So I even gave her my camera. I said, okay, you delete it. And if, you know, if I'm not doing it fast enough. She took the camera and then she started scrolling and I said, okay, no, give me my camera back. So at that point, the phone locked and she gave me the phone back. She shoved it in my hands and said, um, unlock your phone. And I said, no, I'm not going to unlock my phone. I'm not giving it back to you. So as I'm trying to, and I deleted, I did delete her picture. I said, okay, it's deleted. She said, delete it from the folder, the delete folder. Well, I didn't know what the delete folder was, you know, because I don't use my phone that way. My, my Gen Z sons use the phone in that manner. I don't. So as I'm struggling and trying to find the delete folder, I look up and there is the Orlando police. Luckily, the officer was cool and I was calm. And I ultimately, you know, I asked him, I said, okay, officer, could you tell me what I'm supposed to do? Because I have three bags, I'm trying to get to Paris. So he asked her, <clears throat> meaning Jocelyn, and Jocelyn then said, well, we have her on a flight going to going to London, you know, and from London, she can get to Paris. She never told that to me. So then, you know, I had like five minutes to make this flight to this other airline that was going to London. And I had three bags. Again, luckily, the officer was cool. And he said, okay, I'll help you with the bags. And he actually grabbed two of my bags and walked me over to the, the other airlines, which was Virgin Atlantic. So Virgin Atlantic quickly put my bags, you know, uh, on the chute and off I went to London. And then from London, I went to Paris. Uh, the ticket on Virgin Atlantic was a downgrade. And that was also the issue because I kept asking, they kept offering me flights the next day to Paris. Everything was a downgrade. And I said, well, when am I, you know, going to get the difference between what I've paid, which was an upgrade, you know, it was first class. And what you, you know, what you're offering me, and it was no concrete information, okay? So, 
I complained to the Department of Transportation. I complained to, I filed a complaint with the Department of Transportation. I filed a complaint with Delta. I even uh, emailed the CEO whose picture you see. Um, and this is before this Microsoft glitch happened. So can you imagine, you know, if I depend on that system, I might hear from, eventually hear from the Department of Transportation, but I know that I will never probably hear from Delta. And the sad thing is that, unfortunately, I have to travel on Delta again. And I'm a medallion passenger, which means that I've flown a lot of miles and I've spent a lot of money. And this is the service that I get. But as I said in the beginning, you reap what you sow. Because, and this is what I want everybody to learn, when you pay for travel with American Express, and American Express is not paying me, okay? I, this is not like a paid endorsement. But I contacted American Express because I paid my ticket to Paris with American Express. And when I explained to them what happened, they said, okay, file a dispute. We're going to get your money back. And they did. So I'm very, very grateful. Again, life is about karma. You reap what you sow. I am not looking forward to my next trip on Delta. And that's a sad state of affairs because at one time I did like Delta. But now there's a completely different relationship. So I just wanted to pass this information on to you for those of you who travel. Take care and I'll see you next time.